think it goes to say that bowling can be best described as one of, you know, those games that you just gotta kind of die over and over and over again to learn. I love these kinds of games. Frustrating, yet at the same time very rewarding. I found this on a video called Indie Games You Might Have Missed. It's a great series about indie games that not very many people have heard of. If I could recommend, go check out some of the games there. They're pretty cool. The game was developed by Monokey. I tried to look up some information about him or them or possibly her, but unfortunate to say, Monokey has kind of disappeared. All I can say is that Monokey was Swedish, and that's as far as it went for me. More information and such is posted on Allegro.cc, as is the actual game itself. Before we jump into the game, let's take a look at how uh, the game actually runs. I don't think I had to explain this window. Let's just say, starting the game has something to do with pressing launch ball and it also has some settings for you if you want to adjust them. After the monkey is done breathing heavily in your face, you are greeted with one of the brightest title screens I've ever seen. The first thing I noticed when I started this game was I couldn't jump. Which concerned me. It looked like a platformer in the screenshots. Well, as it turns out, you actually need the assistance of these little green guys and these launcher things. Speaking of these launcher things, there's something that you need to know. You're gonna have to master actually leaping on the edge of these things to get places, because if you don't, you're going to end up falling and falling and falling and dying horribly many times. I actually thought there was a problem with the collision detection at one of the points in the game. You had to be like on the dead edge of these things, ready to move in a certain direction, otherwise you're just gonna bounce off the ceiling and probably into a pit, and most of the time an enemy, especially on Jailbreak. It nearly becomes a major problem later on in the game. They even dedicate a level to it. Which brings me to a small question, why is one of the levels named Jiggy? Ah, I'm getting off topic. You have three enemies in this game. You have these red enemies, which just kill you. These ball enemies, which kind of roll into you and just push you around. The green thing is actually described as an enemy in a couple of the files. Why this is, I do not know. It's not really an enemy. It's more of either an obstacle or more of an ally, if anything. Besides, it cries when you die. How can you call that an enemy? Graphically, the game is pink and blue and orange and various other colors. Though those three colors are the, probably the most common. Next to the pink, green, and red that you see on the screen most of the times with your enemies and such. The game at first to me looked like a Flash or Game Maker game, but it was actually a C++ game in Allegro. I don't know why, but it seems that anyone who uses Allegro uses the same style of art. Color it, but don't saturate it. And make it pixel art, specifically. Graphically, all I can say is literally, things represent what they are. It's not the best looking game under the sun, though. For controls, all you really need to be doing is moving left and right. No other action or button pressing is needed on your part. The game does have gamepad support, but I'm not going to really recommend it. But that's just mainly my taste. I find the much stiffer controls of the keyboard to actually be a bit more fluid. Then again, that's just me. No joy to key is required at all. I find the sound effects to be somewhat generic and... Mm, kind of lame. Sure, it perfectly hypes up the game and keeps up with the game's speed. It sets the mood, but really, it's just like... It's... It's just like the developer just sat in his chair and said, uh, sound effects. Yeah, where's SFXR at? And then he modified them in Audacity or something. And then of course we have the best for last. The music. This game has a good soundtrack. A solidly good soundtrack. Upon not noticing that you couldn't jump in this game, I also noticed that the music was very cool. And by very cool I mean... Holy flying Raokao. Is it just me, or am I referencing Raokao a lot lately? Oh well. All you need to know is that the music is awesome. And cool. And all sorts of other things. 
but the bottom line is that it's solid. It's a shame that Monarchy never made a sequel or any other games afterwards to my knowledge. Not the best design game I've ever played in a long time, but hey, good rewards and good frustration. And it's a good way to take your mind off something and have a reason to yell at the cat. Go check out Bowen, link is in the description. I just wanted to mention that I have a Twitter account, ladies and gents. That's also in the description.